Okay, today we're going to be reviewing the Artilink 201 by Topdown. This is your basic OBD2 code reader. It's going to read codes, clear codes, read live data, some live data, not all of it, um, some freeze frame data, readiness status, oxygen sensor tests, onboard monitoring tests, component tests for EVAP leaks, as well as reading the VIN number. This device also comes with lifetime free software updates. Um, so if new codes for new vehicles, that kind of stuff comes up, you hook this up to your computer, go to the top down website, and you can um, update it to the latest software for it. Okay, so some things that are not supported, it does not do ABS codes, so analog brake codes, you're not gonna be able to read any of that. No SRS codes, airbag light codes, you're not gonna read any of that. It's only for um, OBD2 codes, so basic general codes. Um, it's also got built-in um, diagnostic trouble code lookup, so it doesn't have, it's not going to have every single code in there, but all your generic ones, it'll give you a quick synopsis of what the problem may be or what area you may be looking in. Um, you'll, without having to, you know, go to a computer and look it up online, it'll give you a, a quick breakdown of what it may be, so that's kind of nice as well. And as far as what comes in the packaging, this is all you get. You get the code reader itself, no case or anything like that, and you get the USB cable here for updating the software. And it's pretty nice size. It's actually very easily you can just keep it into your glove box. Um, the casing is hard, nice hard plastic. A little bit of rubber on the sides here for grip. So it's nice as far as that goes. So we're going to go ahead and give this a try. All right, so we've actually got a 2014 Ford Escape here with a check engine light on. So we're going to go ahead and put this code reader to the test. We're going to try it out on here and see what we can find. All right, so here we got the 2014 Ford Escape. And we've got a check engine light on it. See the check engine light stays illuminated there. So we're going to go ahead and scan it with uh, the Artilink 201 and see what we can find. And on this vehicle there's just this little port right here so you can pop this panel out. And then you've got the OBD2 port right there. So we'll go ahead and connect this from the top down unit. Plug it right in. Right now I've had the vehicle running but you don't actually have to have it running. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and read the codes here and see what we can get. So we're going to read current diagnostic trouble codes. So we have P068A, ECM slash BCM power relay, de-energized performance too early. I'm not sure what that is, so we'll have to do a little bit of research on that. Next one we've got here is P26B7. The fault code is not found in the database, so we're going to go ahead and look that one up. That must be a Ford specific one. So we're gonna, that's probably I'm what our issue is here, so we're going to go ahead and look that up. But let's go through a couple of the other things here. Let's see what we got for pending codes. I don't know if there's going to be anything in there. Um, P26B7, so that same one there. And let's see what we have for permanent. Uh, same one. So nothing fancy there. Alright, so we can also erase the codes, which we don't want that. We got the readiness here, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, Sims diagnostic trouble codes were cleared. So misfire is okay, fuel system is okay, catalyst monitor, so all the basic readiness type stuff here, oxygen monitor, EGR, okay, so all that stuff's fine. So we can do some data stream here, so let's see. Let's see what we can graph. Alright, so let's see. We got engine coolant temperature. So you can do that if you're going to see if you're overheating, I guess. Um, short term fuel trim, long term fuel trim, intake manifold, absolute pressure. Let's do engine RPM. That'll be an easy one for us to see on video. So click OK here. Alright, so right now it's idling, so what I'm going to do is rev it up a little bit. And you see it go up there. Not a whole lot you can see on the graph though. I'm assuming you can probably upload this and look at it a little closer because here it's not really giving you a whole lot. Okay, there we go. So once it gets a, once more time passes you can see the graphing. It's not exactly the most responsive though because I've rubbed it a couple of times since, but it's probably more of a thing where you can upload it and then take a look at it from there on the computer. I'm assuming we'll take a look and see if we can do that, so let's go back. Alright, 
right. Let's see what we have under freeze frame. Okay, fuel system, diagnostic trouble code that caused required freeze frame data, P26B7, so we're gonna definitely have to look up that code. Coolant temperature, right now 43 degrees Celsius. Engine RPM, under a thousand RPM, vehicle speed. I don't know why it says three kilometers an hour, we're stopped. Um, and take care of temperature, oxygen sensor, short term fuel trim, since engine started seven seconds ago. Fuel level, 31%. Alright, so let's go back, see what else we have here. Oxygen sensor test, so let's try that out. I mean, these are fine, there's no code for the oxygen sensors, but we'll try it out. Bank 2 sensor 3, vehicle does not support, so must not support this vehicle. We'll try the other one, Bank 2 sensor 4, same thing, doesn't support it, so no big deal there. Uh, EVAP system test, let's test that. Uh, doesn't support this vehicle, so I think I've tried this on Hondas, on a, a similar scan tool when it works on them, but it, it must vary. Let's see what we have under vehicle information. I imagine it's probably just going to be pulling the VIN. Yeah, it pulls the VIN, so nothing fancy there. I mean, it, it could be useful for some things, but I mean, you can just read it off of the dash. All right, so let's get out of the diagnostic menu. Go to the ready test. I'm assuming that's going to be for like emissions related type stuff. So yeah, it shows that the check engine lights on, two trouble codes. Um, everything else is pretty much fine that's supported. And then let's see. Let's go to setup. See what we have under there. We have language, so you can do it in looks like a couple Asian languages, English. French, Spanish, German, Italian, Portuguese, so quite a few different languages, so that's kind of nice. You don't always get that with every other tool out there. Um, units of measure. So right now it looks like it is in kilometers an hour, so we want to change that to miles per hour since we're in the U.S. is what we use. Same thing with distance. Temperature as well. So yeah, it looks like it's default by metric, which makes sense. The whole rest of the world uses the metric system except for the U.S., so it's totally understandable. But it's nice that you can change it. The beeper, I actually have it turned off already. I was messing with this earlier. You can turn it back on and you hear a beep every time. I don't really like it, so I keep it off. And let's see what we've got under about. Looks like we have basically just the software version for more version, hardware version. Serial number of the device, what it supports, OBD2 slash EOBD2. So, you know, that's pretty much the basic gist of the tool. We're going to go ahead now and look up online the, the code that we've got and see what we can do about getting rid of this check engine light. Alright, so after doing a little bit of research, it looks like the P26B7 code is a fault with our coolant bypass solenoid. So I went ahead and actually ordered that, so we're going to go ahead and change that today. Um, starting from the beginning, the first thing you do, obviously, go up under the hood. You're going to want to take this cover and just pull it off, either completely or just set it to the side. Not really, I see the solenoid there, so we can just set it to the side for right now. Alright, so this is the valve here. Went ahead and ordered it on eBay. It's the OEM Ford part. I believe it's only like 40 bucks or so. I'll put a link in the description as well as a part number. So here's what the new one looks like. And right down in here, you can see the old one right here under the cover. You can see this guy right here. So that one there, there's a connector there and looks like two little eight millimeter bolts or so, as well as this hose here. So we're gonna go ahead and start digging in. We're probably gonna lose a little bit of coolant, so I'm gonna put a rag underneath uh, this hose here so we can go ahead and catch some of it. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take out this plug here. It's got this little yellow thing on here, so what I'm going to do is press on it with this pick tool here. 
while simultaneously pulling up on it. And the uh, bad boy pulls right out. We're going to push that out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is undo that clamp right down there. Alright, so it's a little hard to see, but I'm trying to get to the clamp right now. Alright, what I might do is try to get that little guy unbolted first and then see if I can just pull this up and then have a little more room to play with to get that clamp off because it's kind of sleazy. So I'm going to try that. Okay, so to get these off I'm going to use that 8mm ratchet. A little tiny guy here. Alright, and I can already feel coolant coming out. Smell it too. Alright, so I got the other one out. It's a little bit of struggle and it's a really tight spot and actually very hard to film. But I got the other one out right here. So now the valve is juicing pretty good, so I've got a drain pan underneath the vehicle. And I'm getting the valve out partially and then we can see we've still got the fat hose right here so we're gonna go ahead and take that off next. Alright so I was able to get it out. A little bit of a pain. I had to do a little bit of finagling. That clamp was really annoying to get to but it came out. A bunch of coolant flows flow out of there. Obviously it's all over the engine bay too so I'm gonna have to break clean after this so we don't get a bunch of um, you know smoking and whatnot. Obviously losing a little bit of coolant so we're gonna have to fill it back up. Let's see what kind this takes because it's oddball colored, so yeah, but comparing this one to the new one, OEM Ford part, so it'll fit just as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and put the new one in and get started. Alright, so I went ahead and just slid the hose back on. I'm not going to slide the clamp back on all the way just yet because it, as I put it back in there, it may end up a little cockeyed and whatnot, so yeah, so from here I'm just kind of... Push this little rascal back down, get it into place, and now I'm going to go ahead and put my little 8 millimeters in there. It's going to be a huge pain. I probably won't be able to film too well because it's very tight in there, but I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so I hand threaded them in. There's no way you're able to see anything in there because the weird positions my hand had to be in to get in there. So now I'm just kind of snugging these up and I'm going to get the clamp on. Alright, and this clamp kind of neat how it works, at least at least how I'm thinking it works. I squeeze it together and then there's a little tab that keeps it open so that I could was able to pull this off and everything. So it's looking like what I'll be able to do now is just go ahead and push down on it right there and then it'll close back up. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out and see if it works. Okay, so now I went ahead and tightened it back up. Got the clamp back in. I was just able to just press back on that little guy there. So it's together. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually start it up before I add any coolant just to make sure there's no leaking or anything. But first I'm going to spray it down with brake cleaner just so you know it cleans it up a little bit and then I can see if there's leaks coming. So, so we just went ahead and sprayed it down with brake cleaner so we're going to fire it up and just make sure we don't have any leaks. So far so good. No leaking. I do see a little tiny nick on the hose. Which I'm not liking. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's right there, right by where the clamp is. I'm not sure if that's going to give us issues down the line. Hoping not. Otherwise, we may have to replace that whole hose or cut a little bit of section of it and put it in. So we'll see what happens. But we'll have to monitor this and see see if we keep getting coolant leaking or anything like that. So we'll monitor it the next few days and see how it goes. But it looks like the valve is in. Not seeing any leaking. There's a little bit of water or coolant from before. I didn't fully spray it down with brake cleaner, but yeah, it looks like it did good. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up a little bit more coolant and see what we got. All right, and here's how low it is. It's obviously now below the minimum, um, so a little bit dripped up, but not a whole lot. And the chunk engine light is out now. I checked, so we are good to go. And then there's also no leaks or anything. This is a few days later at this point. No leaks or anything, it's been driven around. 
for the check engine light to go away. Just gotta top off that coolant, which I admittedly forgot about. All right, and you can see the check engine light is now off. I didn't clear this purposely because I wanted to make sure that the issue was corrected, so I let it go through a few drive cycles and eventually the light just went out, as well as that other oddball code um, that I hadn't seen before. So I'm not sure what the explanation for that one is, but the one for the coolant valve definitely was the valve. So that was a pretty simple fix, not too much money. You know, so there you go. Okay, so overall I would say this is a pretty solid unit for the price. It only goes for about $35 right now on Amazon. And that's pretty good for your entry level scan tool. A lot of the ones that you used to be able to get around that price range weren't this nice. They didn't have color screens. They didn't do any of the readiness monitors, they basically just read codes. So this gives you a little bit more in that sense. And for the price, you really can't beat it. Um, if you're looking for something really basic that's going to just read codes and plus a couple other little things here and there that you can just toss in your glove box, drive around with, just to have just in case you have issues or a check engine light that comes up, you know, this would be a great option for you at only 35 bucks, and I'll link it in the description. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and leave them below. Thanks.